Hey, it's Carlon, and this is Cherry Bomb's first ever Sex in the News segment. As you can tell by my attire, I'm out east in the Hamptons visiting the family. I just got out of the pool, so don't be jealous. It's really hot. It's like 95 degrees in New York right now. But um, I dragged myself out of this pool because I wanted to talk about some issues. I thought this would be a good um, place to start with the whole um, Hillary running for the office of the president and the whole bashing with the whole cleavage debate. I'm not sure if you caught it, but um, Hillary did a uh, debate on CNN, and she wore like a pink jacket and a black shell. When I was a lawyer, we called them shells. They're like silky little tank tops that come up to like here, so there's no cleavage. And you get them in like black, or white, or cream. So she had a black one on with like a big thing of pearls in her jacket. So, of course, all the political pundits were talking about how Hillary was using her cleavage to kind of, I guess, somehow make herself more presidential. I don't understand. It's kind of like an oxymoron, cleavage and presidential. But um, the allegation was there was that she was showing off her tatas. Um, and I don't really know why, but this would give her an advantage. But it would, went throughout the blogosphere, and everyone was all up in arms. And I kind of thought, like, God damn it, how long is it going to take before we're not sexualized anymore? How many more women have to run for the office of presidency? How many more CEOs? Hillary has never used her sexuality to get ahead. She's um, graduated the top universities in the country, Harvard and Yale. She's married to Bill Clinton. She never was one of those glamour girls. Remember when she was the whole governor's wife and she had the hippie haircut and the dark glasses? Hillary isn't a cleavage gal, but still they're looking for straws, grasping for straws. They're trying to find something to sexualize her. So I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of like, granted, that's what everyone does, right? You're a playmate or you're nothing. So then, I'm gonna read this too, I caught on ABC News an article yesterday afternoon, and here's the title. Argentina's fashionable presidential hopeful, Christina Kirchner, makes Hillary Clinton look dowdy. So she's gone from being a sex pot to being dowdy. So they have a picture of the woman who ran um, in the French presidential election, I forget her name. Hillary's in the middle, of course Hillary looks like all haggard and old, and then there's this Latin woman. Okay, here's the caption under the title. Europeans and South Americans just have sexy in their blood. So now we're saying we're sexualizing whole groups of people and saying that Latin and European women are just sexy and they can't help it. But I guess American women aren't. So already, so damned if you do, damned if you do. So I'm going to read a little bit about this article. When Argentina's foxy first lady and fashionista Christina Kirchner announced July 2nd that she would run for president, she allowed her long black hair to cascade over a plunging neckline. But America's first lady of politics, Hillary Rodham Clinton, who has often been compared to Kirchner, opted for a solid black pantsuit during her presidential debate. So here she's being slammed for being too conservatively dressed. It was interesting, I remember in um, college as a poli-sci major, writing an article about how, um, not an article, I'm sorry, writing a paper on how if you went through all the articles on any kind of female candidate for any office, they always focused on what they wore. It would be, oh, she wore a pink polka dotted, or she wore a black blah, 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 blah with an Hermes scarf, ha, ha, ha. And it hasn't changed. And what's interesting is they are using sex to be a criticism. Like, she's so cleavage, she's sexy. And now they're using that she's too dowdy. So she's never just right. And I think that's sometimes the message women get from our culture. We're never just right. It's never enough and it's never okay. So I'm feeling completely and totally frustrated. And I'm like, you know, I want a silver lining. I want to believe that feminism did something for us. It's not dead, that we haven't regressed the way we have with the whole size zero and the body image issues. We burned our bras and now we're wearing padded ones. What's going on? So I'm combing and combing the wires trying to find some kind of validation for anything that I do in my life. And I find this killer article and of course, it's in the Times. Um, here's the title of the article. For big earners in big city, a gap in women's favor. Young women in New York and several of the nation's largest cities who work full time have forged ahead of men in wages, according to an analysis of recent, recent census data. The shift occurred in New York around 2000, and it's included LA, Dallas, Chicago, and Boston. And what they found, economists found, what was so striking is that women now 
are making 117% more than their male counterparts. Now this has never happened. And nationally, if you look at all the age groups, we are still making 77 cents on the dollar. But why do you see this little pop in the 20s in urban centers where women are making more? Or being a woman is actually an advantage. Now they don't know exactly why, but they think it's because women are graduating college in record numbers and that men aren't going to college at the same level at the same level women are. So as a young woman, you graduate college, you come out, you move to the city, you get a job, you're there. You're committed, you're achievement oriented, and then I know I moved to the city. I mean I was living in a suburb, but I chose New York because I knew that New York is about the money. As long as I achieved, as long as I earned, that I would be treated fairly. And that's what we're talking about. That's all we really want. So that was my silver lining and my silver lining for you that they still may sexualize us and talk about what we wear. But at the end of the day, there's a whole generation of women that are growing up and they're making more than men and they're expecting more. And I think with economic liberation, and education that will transcend into sexual liberation so I think we're a couple of clicks away and I can't believe I'm saying this I'm so excited and I think our children will have a much easier time of it so this is Carlin Ross with the first ever and more to follow sex and news segment for newcherrybomb.com thanks